god, my K is really weird when I'm Okay, so we, we, are, we are rolling and you go ahead. <laughs> Hello. This Hello. is my back. Look, it's it's in big letters now, which means Cow. It probably, won't, <laughs> probably won't fit on the uh, screen. Uh, oh my word! Right at that angle is awful. Let's see. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. That's not so bad. I know you. <laughs> I know you said uh, think of the sort of questions that might be getting asked. And I, uh, Oh, no, I didn't say that. You said that. <laughs> oh, okay, so I okay. So <laughs> questions, and uh, I went and wrote some sort of like questions that might be getting asked, and uh, it turned out that I just wanted to write notes, and in the end, I ended up just writing paragraphs and paragraphs. <laughs> so let's let's not do that. That's too much. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to... Oh, my video is so slow. Uh, yeah, so my, my video is laggy and let no one be discouraged by that. Uh, I'm going to uh, explain now why have we come here? We Why, why have we gathered here? Why are we uh, braving the sunny weather and chaotic uh, hair? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you wear the short hair quite well, actually. It, hmm? it works well on you. Yeah, but it it needs maintenance. The see, <laughs> there there's there's a very good reason uh, for for this. So in winter, uh, as uh, as as human hair turns more brittle and uh, dry in winter. I had the brilliant of brilliant idea of uh well not I wouldn't say I wouldn't call it shaving half of my head but I would uh separate like uh thin strips between hair and then I would uh I would cut those thin strips very very short so technically I had kind of sort of buzzed or shaved half of my hair it's just you couldn't see it because it, it's it, it was between the the longer hair and yeah. and uh, it helped me to do the you know the sort of hay rolls that that I like to roll it, it helped mm. with those but thing is <laughs> it's growing out so now instead of having these thin strips of uh, of uh, of perfect uh, perfect buzz I have these uh, swaths of uh, indeterminate length poking out from everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anywho, so I, I think right now we're in casual mode, so uh, let me try to sort of direct the talk towards the writer's corner chat number whatever. I have, I have lost the number count a long time ago. Uh, but yeah, uh, what we're planning to do this week is to record some bits and pieces uh, regarding Nox's uh, solo work. Yay! <laughs> Coming soon. We'll be talking about that. Yes. So so we will we will talk a little bit about uh, the works that we have been up to. Stay. Improvement. Pebbles from the Flintstone. Flintstones. Mm. Let me see. Hang yeah. on. I'll I'll take that. <laughs> or mm. the uh, tiny moo from the Moomins. I'll take that as well. <laughs> oh, you're you're missing the bone, unfortunately. Uh, bones can be arranged, I think, <laughs> if if the need arises. So, uh, we have gathered here today uh, to uh, talk about Nox's solo project. Also, maybe talk about another solo project and then another project that isn't strictly speaking solo project, but that will um, come to fruition 
this uh, this sun uh, no Saturday this Saturday so mm. I think let's let's sort of briefly talk about what's going on in general and then I'm gonna start the new start rolling a new and then we can do like a Code Wars uh, marathon because yeah. I should have the rest of the day free so I, I can I can spew questions at you mm-hmm. at will mm-hmm. So what what have what have we been up to besides uh, hair mutilation? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I've been working with Carl uh, on Caldevarta for a while now. It's been great fun, and some of the emails back and forth. Like I got an email from him yesterday, and it was like he'd been working out all the maths and everything for Caldevarta. Mm-hmm. Uh, like uh, not, it's more like megaseconds and kiloseconds and that sort of thing so mm-hmm. we're sticking with that for this one and uh, he sent me an email yesterday and the end of it just said please for the love of all that is holy and all the things that are not fix the transit drives for KD2 because that was providing a lot of sort of like timing issues and everything mm-hmm. so that was one of the funniest email endings I'd ever had please for the love <laughs> of all that is holy fix this so we don't have to go through this for the second book so, okay yeah I'm with you I'm fully on board with you there um, but we've got it accurate so. and to be honest with you you'd have to be the sort of person to get a calculator out and really you know write down all the mathematics of what's mm. going on he's really figured it out though he is spot on with the maths um, right so isn't the uh, we, we will talk more about it uh, later on but isn't this exactly the sort of thing that we're trying to deliberately fight in our books though uh, it's more of a case of they're sending someone out to meet someone mm. else and it's okay so this 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 vessel is doing this for how many times and how uh, mm. for how many kiloseconds so on the on the station how many sort of cycles mm. of of past and and how do the character like uh, one of the characters is talking about um how long it's been since they left mm. for example okay. so it's it's small things like that but we okay. wanted to get it right yeah, yeah so you're syncing up two characters and they are both reporting in absolute time so you have to mm. make sure yeah. that one doesn't that that that, that those are approximately the same <laughs> We did start talking about special relativity and things in the email as well, and at that point, my head, my brain just melted out of my ears, <laughs> and I was just like, oh, "We need to sort of tackle this in a different way." So mm-hmm. we, yeah, we haven't we haven't done anything regarding special relativity because I'm not this is pro- yeah this enough. is this is this is where we draw the line. We w- we will not yeah. go there because this is not. Uh, our area of competence, mm-hmm. and we will work around it. Yeah. I I think uh, I think uh, next time uh, you're having a discussion on uh, how transit works, bring me in because I think yeah. I think I might be able to stomp certain calculation uh, um, urges to calculate. It's only a problem because the Caldevars and vessels have got that malware affecting them. If if it was just any other ship in the universe and they could transit from wherever to wherever, then a lot of these problems wouldn't really arise. So the malware is a real big player in this book and it really does affect them. So mm. we'll see how it plays out. You're yeah. not looking too convinced at the moment, but I don't I, I am not convinced to be to be honest, no. because the uh no, this is a world building thing, but basically the way we have set up how transit works at all uh i'm I'm picking up certain keywords that shouldn't come into play to begin with so right um uh, if if a second edition is in order at some point and if uh, if any uh other events are dependent on the events of this plot then mm-hmm. I, I i i want uh, i want some eagle-eyed uh, scrutiny on that it's not the events from cow of Oz don't affect anything else okay but events from other books like and it's and it's not like a massive thing but it's like the events from split personality 2 <coughs> or the events prior to split personality 2 are what cause 
Elise mm-hmm. to leave Paradise and go to Caldevaza, but they're yeah. not. It's not like a massively impactful thing. Mm-hmm. And to be honest with you, um, Split Personality Two, uh, not to give anything away here, but uh, it will aid with those problems. And that mm-hmm. in itself presents a personal problem for Elise. She's like, well, mm-hmm. that's that's sorted now. I can go back home, but now I've found my place on this station and I'm making a difference here. So she has a real internal conflict about that, and her dad's always messaging her and being like oh hey kid how's it going you know she's Aww. got a real great relationship with her mm. family so that's a, that's an aspect I really like mm-hmm. um, so yeah but we'll get into that more when the questions come up yes so for now so basically Code Varsha is a solo story that you have been writing and that Carl has helped uh, is refining and editing mm-hmm. and it is, oh, yes. it is essentially a side story set in Chaos Nova Universe that mm-hmm. uh, currently as far as we know <laughs> doesn't <laughs> actually do- doesn't affect the upcoming stories but of course we've seen this before we do a side story and then a connection appears and we can actually put it together with another one so I, I won't rule mm. that out now about my solo project. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I have also been working on a solo thing, uh, a little, kind of, sort of a side story, although I can already uh, show where it links up to the big story. But for for the moment, it is a side story uh, that uh, observes a paramilitary unit uh, among the people where my player character comes from uh, shorthand space Estonians uh, and uh, the story takes place in a different time stream than uh, the ones that we have observed so far so in relation to my player character's adventures this this is uh, a few notches back in time and uh, so far I have written out three parts of it Uh, at the second half of May I will be working on the final installment and I will finish it (laughs) 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 I will not postpone it I will finish it because I I know exactly where the story goes I just need to you know put the text on paper you know the easy Mm. part (laughs) but yeah yeah, essentially (laughs) essentially it is a uh, it is a journey the the whole story is about a journey of a uh, of a well bigger than a party smaller than a company so let's say a journey for a bunch of people who has to overcome uh, some uh, mundane challenges and some slightly not so mundane challenges as their equipment breaks down little by little and they will have to learn to do without certain comforts and so on and uh, I am not going to explain where it all culminates right now but uh, it has something to do with my player character so there is that <laughs> I've absolutely loved listening to when you've <laughs> we've been talking recently and you've been explaining to me what's going on I've been really like this is awesome you know I've been really excited for you so that yeah oh I should have recorded it I should have recorded it because that was some good outline and then the other day when I looked at my written notes I'm like I I thought I thought it was far more complete the the end part but that's that's something that happens uh, with each uh, serialized installment it's like when I when I finish the previous one, I'm like, oh, I have so many notes for the next one. It's practically writing itself. It's practically <laughs> finished. I just need to p- sp- splat some paint on it, and then uh, uh, I take a few few days uh, off, and then yeah. I look at it again, and I'm like, <laughs> fuck. I know this feeling well. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. How many chapters did you have again? Oh, for Caldevaza? Yeah. Uh, there are 27 chapters mm-hmm. in total. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And also, the other side of it is, 
You, I sometimes have all the notes in the world, right? And I mm -hmm. have a very clear picture of what I want in my head. Mm -hmm. And then I start to write in the thing. Mm -hmm. And split personality one and split personality two are the biggest attestment to this. There must be at least 15 versions of <laughs> Luna and Rogue, something, something, the Gathram, right? So mm -hmm. <laughs> there are so many versions of that. So I convinced myself, well, at the beginning, it was like, oh, this should be easy. Split personality, yep. you know these characters, so everything's fine. I'll leave it for a couple of days, you know, let <laughs> come back to it. And it's like, what does any of this mean like what have i done for for all of it so all of that's holy and all of that is not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh funny funny story about the numbers so uh, i too uh, try to uh, <laughs> not give too specific uh, uh, too specific uh, sequences so in the journey slash uh, base camp story uh I am not actually showing any transit so there mm. so the whole transit uh, indetermination uh that I'm not even addressing that but as I describe the occurrences uh I don't have too many uh, I I I mean I didn't have too many direct uh time definitions but then, uh, but that, that that was one thing that was pointed out to me that I should actually give some sort of time frame to give the reader some expectation of how how much how much time they're going to be spending here or whatever. Mm. And <laughs> and I, I thought like, hmm, okay, so their journey from uh, from the planet with all the uh, decoy maneuvers and waiting and all that was roughly one and a half weeks and I would estimate that the journey across the landscape uh, would be around the same so I figured like yeah it would be one one point three megaseconds but of course uh, because I didn't want to one point three megaseconds doesn't uh, sound very literary uh, I, I decided is that about 13 days? A little bit more. Uh, I think it's about... Uh, 15... So, so yeah, it's, oh. it, it's, it's yeah. about two weeks, actually. So one week yeah. is 11 megaseconds. Mm -hmm. No, wait. Uh, yeah, well, it's, uh, it's 11 days. 11 yeah, one, one, one megasecond is 11 <laughs> days, so 1.3 megaseconds is like... A little bit more than that. So yeah, about about two weeks. Uh, I, I wasn't trying to be tr too precise, but uh, as I was going on with the writing, uh, I just wanted to make sure that the activities that I have depicted and the waiting times that they actually fit uh, within mm. the uh, approximus approximation. And then I realized that in the beginning, uh, when I tried to use nicer words about the 1.3 megaseconds I had written uh, 13,000 kiloseconds okay <laughs> and and when I started to put the activities together I was like wait 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 that's uh, that, that's the, the difference is too big and the real duh mm. I was off with a decimal <laughs> oh. yeah so it was uh, it was 1300 not 13,000 so a, a simple <laughs> a simple conversion error so i i think i was i was thinking of the right number but i i wrote the wrong word <laughs> or something like that but yeah so that's that even if the, even if we give the precise uh, numbers the reader might not uh, you know get those anywho carl has suggested i include a glossary of terms to explain what megasecond, kilosecond, and all that sort of things. I'm not feeling it right now. Yeah. It might happen, but I, at the moment I'm not. I I wouldn't because uh, this is something they that are, they are standard terms. Yeah, standard yeah, standard terms, yeah. This is uh, this is something that you can derive from our era uh, mm -hmm. vocabulary. So even yeah. if you even if you use words that are not familiar so so for example I, I, I understand that uh, for uh, certain made-up uh, uh, 
uh, made up uh, animals and such. It would be fun to have like a little uh, little encyc encyclopedia, kind kind of like we we did have the uh, entry for Nemura in Sika. Mm. So like if it's in inward information presented like that. that, that Oh, I love that because that was so <laughs> organic the way that happened. Like, the, we didn't need to include like a mm. dictionary of what Bora and the Moor and stuff was. Yeah, was yeah. So, 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 yeah. With the animals and stuff and the biology, you know, all the human-made bi biology. Uh, my stance is that we explain what we like within the text itself. And mm. if it do and if we don't, then it's basically it's flair and doesn't need explaining anyway. But when it comes mm. to units like this, then since this can be derived from the unified system of measurements, the same with the uh, same with the uh, circa diem, it is it is an actual foreign word in current day. So yeah, I I'm I'm with you there. Uh this this is this does not warrant a glossary. Mm. I mean, uh if one day we maybe get so far that uh we can uh we can uh, keep a little wiki kind of thing on the site. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Like uh, we can explain has, useful terms he there. Has suggested a chaos nova bible. Uh, not uh, not to the extent of a bible, but I think just a book that when we bring people like Carl in on a project, mm -hmm. it's it's. I don't have to then explain it to them from the ground up what all this mm -hmm. stuff means. I can just sort of say, I'll mm -hmm. check this resource yeah, out, yeah. and that sort of covers most of the stuff. And if there's any extra questions, yeah. then so yeah, of, of course, uh, right now there is such a place in the forums, uh, in the world building section. There, I think there's certain technologies, and even though it's it's less about the explanation and more about the invention. Uh, we actually do have some reference materials, but of course, in the future, it would be lovely to have them organized so that we can mm -hmm. de deliver a package for those uh, who uh, who are new to the to the stuff. Yeah. But. But. So something completely different. Be before we delve into the world building and all that fun stuff, <laughs> there is a third project third project that is uh, actually completed on our part for now and that is awaiting um, for the world's cogs to turn <laughs> some something something that happens this uh, this Saturday are we Ring a bell? To talk about it? Uh, I think we we are we are allowed to uh, talk about it because the jury has already done all their stuff and they know who is who and uh, this is th this is our uh, chance to speculate at the 11th hour <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, we don't have to go into specifics we can uh, we can talk about the story in general we can talk mm -hmm. about the process and uh, and all that. So so yeah, I think uh, I think we could leave the uh, comments that uh, delve into the contents of the story. Let's leave those for next week and beyond. But right now we can we 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 can say what we did. I'm gonna. Uh, I I'm gonna. Well, yeah. You you take this away because I'm gonna be like sat D and I'm gonna be talking about it in code word terms and I'm gonna uh -huh. be, you know so I think it'd be better if you explain. It. Okay, so uh, this winter uh, the Estonian uh, speculative fiction society and uh, one local publishing house that focuses on on sci-fi and fantasy. Uh, titles uh, in collaboration. They announced a, a short story context contest 
på uh, sci-fi, fantasy, horror and, and other specific uh, stories. And uh, at the time I was already sort of preparing to uh, convert one of our story drafts uh, into Estonian text. So the I, 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 I was kind of already in the mindset that this uh, short story that we had uh, worked a year before, uh, worked on a year before and had actually developed it quite far and it was basically in the text writing phase. Uh, I had already sort of uh, made preparations to uh, to convert the, that draft into an Estonian text and then present it to reactor probably. And then when the contest came uh, I checked with some of the uh, judges who also happened to run the uh, sci-fi writing workshop uh, if this sort of solution was okay. So if we have a co-written draft and I developed the Estonian text from it, would it would it be okay to present this work? And uh, they they said it would be okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so if That's good. yeah, so if 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 for if for some reason uh, we find ourselves disqualified, I can at mm -hmm. least say that uh, I presented everything in good faith. Uh, so as as far as we knew at the moment, it was okay to present it this way. Uh, anywho, uh, so uh, when I, f I think I mostly worked on it on March because uh, when I started uh, looking at the draft that we we had worked on prior, and we have videos of this, but as as of now, uh, while the contest was on, uh, I unlisted those videos just in case because uh, we are not supposed to... Uh, okay, the authors could are, are a little bit more free in discussion, but, you know, just in case not to contaminate the infosphere and whatnot, uh, I, I unlisted those. But anyway, uh, we, we, had, uh, uh, we had taken one of Nox's drafts. When did, uh, when did you write the original, by the way? Do you know? Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> many moons ago. Okay. Night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a long time uh, ago. As you do. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, so... So, yeah, we, we took one of uh, old ex existing stories, uh, ripped it apart, and built the new... So we built the new outline based on the original first draft. Mm -hmm. And then sort of bounced it back and forth and uh, refined the outline and also came up with some uh, nifty developments and so on. And when I picked up uh, the uh, draft that we have we had been working on together, uh, I remembered that we we sort of ran into into a wall or like we were kind of far in development. But uh, I remember the feeling of getting stuck, like mm. we almost almost had it, but not quite. And now when I picked the draft up and started uh, uh, filling uh, all the all the outline and blanks with Estonian text, I was like, hmm, mm -hmm. we've done a good work. <laughs> so basically the, the, the draft and the outline was... Uh, I, it seemed more complete than I remembered. So I guess we had sort of uh, given up a little bit uh, before the end. <laughs> so when our, when our <laughs> strengths uh, ran out, uh, we were actually quite far in the story. So mm. once, the, once the contest is over, then uh, I will turn, <laughs> I will turn the Estonian text into an English text as well. But yeah, so that was another element of it was mm -hmm. the fact that uh, once once it was sort of well I don't know how did we come about with the f the idea that you did you would do it in Estonian and then we translate it back into Eng or adapt it back into English as opposed to the way we did it before with Seeker for example where we 
where we did the whole thing in English and then adapted it to Estonian. Uh, well, we're doing it in reverse now, but it's the benefits of doing it in Estonian will help the English version, right? Oh yeah, uh, I I don't remember. I uh, I think it was just a random idea. Like I I mm. think um, I think I I might have gotten the idea before I started uh, on the base camp story. So I had I think I think the thing was that I had run out of uh, drafts, and I felt like I needed something. Uh, I needed a fresh project to carry on. Uh, for the writing workshop uh, and and something to present to reactor mm. and uh, and since this one was already in quite late stage, I was like, hmm, here is something that I <laughs> could uh, you know finalize with with maybe a little bit less effort than churning out the whole new idea. Mm. So I I, th I, th I think the idea came sometime uh, last uh, last autumn, but. Uh, because I started working on the other story, it sort of uh, uh, it went into the back burner. Uh, so I, I was I was still sort of thinking about doing it, but I didn't have any clear plans. But then when the contest info came, I was like, hmm, hmm. <laughs> wait a minute, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and part of the decision was because I was already working on two bigger stories at the time so I was already working on the base camp story and then the story for the uh, shared universe here in Estonia which I'm gonna work on in the upcoming uh, workshop boot camp uh, tomorrow but uh, but yeah, because I had already two bigger things in the pipeline, I was like, mm, okay, I I won't have the brain brain power to do to start anything completely new, but what about? Hmm. <laughs> and it's something uh, we prepared earlier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, I mean, there was still some work to be done with it, but uh, mm -hmm. we had all this uh, homework layers underneath, so. In the end, uh, while well, I kept picking on uh, on the text uh, beforehand, the final sort of uh, crunch uh, was just two days uh, when I when I filled in the final text. So it's like one one day to uh, yeah. to complete the text and one day to check and edit and all that. I was pretty pretty happy with the result. <laughs> But yeah, so it was. Yeah, I think one of the other problems that we had was uh, Sat D uh, was part of like the whole short story mm -hmm. collection. Yeah, and I think because we were sort of poking at things individually. Like I, mm -hmm. I seem to remember there was a lot of split personality, mm -hmm. uh, one last job stuff going on, mm -hmm. and there were notes flying. Oh, there were notes flying around for Salvage Mission, and there were notes flying around for Destiny's Trials. So I think because we were just sort of nipping at things piecemeal, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. we got worn out. And yeah, and we will find this in the future. <laughs> 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 yeah, clear clear objectives make for clear work schedules. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is something we both struggle with. So there is that. But yeah, so this this brings us to this week. So, uh, the deadline for all the short stories was last day of March, and then uh, already mid-April, all the judges I know were like, hush, hush, oh, we have already read them all, and we have, uh, basically, the, when they were reading uh, the stories, they didn't know the, who the authors were, because the author data mm. and the stories were kept separately. And once they had already judged the stories, that's when the uh, coordinator gave them the offer date and look, oh, we, we know everything, <laughs> but we're not saying anything. <laughs> so uh, this Saturday, uh, there is uh, the uh, end ceremony for the short story contest. It's part of uh, the Prima Vista Literary Festival uh, here in Tartu. I'm gonna skip the rest of the festival 
but uh, <laughs> uh, but I should be there for for the ceremony. So uh, just in case, stay online on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> mm. No pressure. It it. I wish you luck. Uh, <laughs> I I hope you have a good time, and I wish you luck. Um, yeah. Just, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, well, it's your story too, so. <laughs> it would feel weird to wish myself luck, though. Hmm. Heil myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like one of those odd moments. Like, mm, yeah, this, mm. no. Just, just, just good luck to you. Okay. Uh, so, we, yeah. shall, we shall see how this goes. Mm hmm. And, and hey, yep. this, is, this is a big step. Because yep. this time last year we weren't entering competitions, uh, no. Nope. So you know that's a step. And this time last year we didn't have nearly as much finished text material as we have now. Mm. So uh, I, I'm not even gonna try to remember what the number was on your Kaudovasa uh, uh, screenshot. It was I think six dig digits, something. A hundred thousand words and uh, broken down into 27 chapters across 500 uh, seeker sized pages. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Meanwhile. <laughs> uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, the base camp story so far is let's see, it was 3,000. 400, 4,100, and then 5,400. So it's like... So about 14,000. Yeah, so on, on average, uh, one installment has been uh, 4,000-ish. So uh, sort of projecting that the final part won't be that much longer Let, let's say it, it would be about uh, 16 17,000 so approaching a novella almost <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't um, remember how many um, World Seeker was uh, 25-ish I think 20, 27,000 mm. maybe Jesus that's quite a leap between between <laughs> books, <laughs> mm. I think it's. I tried to keep it all relevant, though. Mm. In fact, I think it is all relevant. Mm. It all just drives the story forward. So, uh, <laughs> if it's in there, there's a reason it's in Ooh. there. And we and Carl and can I just say two things? Yeah. Yep. Prior to hanging out with Carl and doing the the Cadavaza stuff, I would not have even bothered trying to calculate when you were just throwing numbers there about how many words the base camp story is in chapters. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't have even tried to calculate that, but now Cole's got me on the sort of thinking in terms of numbers and that, and I'm just like, okay, yeah, so you can stick those two together. So thanks for that, Cole, <laughs> messing with my um, brain and making me do math things. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, yeah, Cole um, suggested that we cut some quite significant chunks from mm. Caldervaza, and if it wasn't for him, the story would probably be running about 125,000. And there would be stuff that didn't really need to be in there. Um, sort of just nice conversations between a couple of people that, that doesn't really drive the story forward or is a sort of a, a rehash of another scene just involving different characters, then that, that we got rid of that stuff. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it was nice to have the little character moments. And whenever Elise turns up, uh, she always makes me laugh. So I absolutely <laughs> love that about her. She's cool. Um, so, yeah. We, it, it, it drives the story forward. That's, <laughs> that's yeah. All the, all the words have been used valuably. Is that the right word? They've been used... With purpose. Like, yes, there's precision. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. I can't wait. I can't wait to share it with you. <laughs> uh, on on oh, yeah. that note, I think uh, let's... Uh, uh, let's wrap up the more casual writing corner part mm -hmm. and uh, take a little break and then carry on with uh, the full on cow divorce part. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so. Thanks for watching. 
Thank you everybody watching at home. I will now try to interface with OBS. Stop.